Hi everyone and welcome! My name is Tati and I'm a knitwear designer. On this channel I talk about knitting and all the creative processes around it. I also talk about Ukraine, my heritage and many many other things. So if you're interested, please subscribe. I'm recording this episode for my Patreon and YouTube channel members who will get a primary access. So if you'd like to stay up to date, please join me on Patreon or as a member of this channel. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of my podcast. I want to start by thanking you all for being here. I want to thank those of you who've been supporting me for years and also those of you who just joined. Um, I've been blown away by the response uh, to my new design, the one I'm wearing now. It's called Polina Pullover. Um, and I've over the last two weeks, I've received so many sweet messages, so many comments and requests and so much attention that um, I'm just completely overwhelmed and I'm very, very grateful for all the support that I'm receiving from the community. And um, I just wanted to say that thank you for all of this. Um, thank you for keeping me going. Um, thank you for picking me up when I need cheering and um, yeah it's not an easy time for me but I'm glad that I could share bits of my uh, soul my culture with you and that you actually are open to receive it so that's a huge treat and a huge huge honor to me thank you all yes Polina turned out to be a big thing <laughs> which I didn't expect to be honest um, but in a good way. So it got very busy, uh, but good busy. And there were so many people who wanted to knit it and were asking for a knit along that I decided to host one. <laughs> it is my first ever knit along, both hosting and participating. Well, I'm not knitting, to be honest. <laughs> I'm working on a new design, which is also very exciting. But I will be um, moderating and, of course, uh, hosting it and um, we are having it on Ravelry. We already started and it's gonna last for 12 weeks. So I hope that gives you enough time to join even at a later stage and still catch up and finish together with, with the rest of us. And um, there is a separate thread for finished objects. And if you join us there and you post a picture, then you are also um, entering a competition for the prizes. Um, I don't know what they're gonna be yet, but I'm working on it and I, I promise they will be really nice. So I hope to pick something something very sweet and special for you. Yeah, so that's the plan with the knit along and uh, it is in Ravelry. Uh, my group is called there, that is, that is Knit Garden or Tati Lutzak, you, both ways you will find the group. And um, you are more than welcome to join us there. We are also having a separate uh, chat for Patreon members who are joining the, the Need Along and that's a bit smaller scale uh, affair and uh, I feel like it's a bit more uh, personal of course because I can contribute there more and I can also chat more with people. So if you are interested in a more um, quiet and soft sort of Need Along communication style then you're more than welcome to join me on patreon um, unfortunately i only have to warn you that the the chat option is available to paying members only not the free members and that's just a feature of the patreon how it is i can't change that um, so if you can afford to buy me a cup of coffee you're more than welcome to do that and join us for the for the chat so yeah, as you can see, a lot of my inspiration comes from my heritage, from where I come from. And um, I think that's mostly because of the war. And uh, that's a story for a therapist. But uh, why I'm saying this is because my next design is also rooted in Ukrainian culture. And um, 
it might feel a little bit Christmassy for some people, but um, I'm not gonna spoil it now. You will see and then you decide if that, um, if that has anything to do with Christmas for you or not. So my new design is called Pavuk. And in Ukrainian that means a spider. But I'm not talking about um, spiders. Um, yeah, not the animals. We call a spider this um, um, very light decorative mobile sort of thing made from straw that is um, moving slowly with the wind and um, in many northern countries are used for Christmas decorations and uh, yeah, in general popular in many um, northern European and uh, eastern European countries where traditionally wheat um, was grown so the straw was available and they are not called spiders in all their languages well in some um, I asked on Instagram uh, if people would if, do be, if people have them in their countries and how they call them so if you're wondering you can um, go there and read their stories but I will list here the um, the names from different countries how they called and uh, you can then research and see um, how they play different roles in different countries and uh, how different the traditions are that are connected to these um, items so in some countries they're just pure decoration in others they also have some ritual meaning and um, this is what I like about uh, Ukrainian tradition that uh, we actually have that we actually have that meaning and um, in Ukraine there was a tradition to make them every year before Christmas and um, put them in a special place in the house where the faces the pictures of the saints were and it was um, like a special place where uh, rituals were connect which to which rituals were connected so um, it was hanged in the in the corner called pokut and there uh, it was uh, supposed to catch all the negativity that was going on in the that was coming in into the house it was supposed to protect the family members living in the house and um, it was hanging there the whole year so you make one on Christmas and then you keep it till the next Christmas and before the next one before making a new one you have to burn the previous one releasing all the um, getting rid of all the negativity and just cleansing for the new year and uh, I think it comes from the old peasant times and um, it has a lot of uh, magical senses in it. In some way I think people started connecting it also to Christianity saying that the cave where Maria was hiding with the little Jesus was um, the entrance was covered with uh, spider webs and then the soldiers they were uh, running after them they couldn't find them and then the spiders saved the Jesus and um, in that way they connect this uh, spiders uh, to religion but I like this tradition mostly because this cleansing ritual speaks to me and uh, having this ritual of burning something old that uh, contains all the bad things from the last year and making something new with the hopes for the future is um, is very important it's a it's a way of processing things and moving from one year to the next one with the best intentions so that's why I chose it as an inspiration and I thought there would be yet another beautiful Ukrainian thing that I wanted to share with you and um, somehow um, yeah relieve the, the nice uh, Christmas moments I also must say that in many regions of Ukraine it is a forgotten tradition um, when I was a child we didn't make any we did some things with straw when I was at school but I don't remember that we were making spiders and um, at home we also didn't didn't make them but where my father is from and when we went to visit them they they did have them in every house they were hanging and uh, I saw them there and I knew that um, the, the story behind them and um, 
And then, yeah, when the war started, <laughs> I made my first uh, spider and um, for the first attempt it turned out really well and it served its purpose. So this year when we were on the farm, um, just taking a little break from everything, I burned mine in a, a stove. Because, uh, well, I can't imagine where I can burn it in the, in the city, not really. And I think it was very meditative to see it like flaming up and just slowly dying out with like releasing everything so yeah and then the next day or yeah the following day uh, we made a new one together with my husband and it also was a very nice bonding experience for us to to just improvise and make new shapes and it, it, it is now with a new design <laughs> uh, we made a new design this year and um, yeah it's hanging at our entrance and when you come in and go up the stairs you you face it and then you have to leave everything negative that you brought into the house there so that's a very nice little thing and i designed a very geometrical pattern which is I think a bit unusual for me, but well, nonetheless, I enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> same amount as working with leaves and flowers. So, uh, yeah, it is a round yolk pullover. I'm gonna show you in just a second. So this is a swatch of the of the yolk, and uh, I think it looks absolutely beautiful, um, being so geometrical and also resembling so closely the the shape of a spider. So the design is ready. Uh, we finished the test and I'm just waiting to do the final edits and adjust little bits that I have to adjust. And um, I think we will release it. We. Oui. We. Oui. Um, I will release it in the middle of February or so. It is a very light pullover. It's made in um, Lipetit Lungs Wool from Oh, I always... I don't know how they say it in French. Bit, bit, ah, no, I'm not gonna try. Um, but I will put it here and in the down below. So this is what it is. Um, I warned you. There's lots of spiders on the yoke. And, um, and there's also patterning on the ham, which I really love as well. And this is... This is how it looks. We, I usually do my color works in two colors. I don't know why. I really enjoy colors, but when it comes to um, working with colors, I'm very, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's just somehow in my head, everything is in two colors. Even though I really enjoy when people make nice gradients down the yolks and and they know how to combine colors and oh I wish I could do that but it's in, in my head it's always two colors so for now it's two colors but I have to tell you that some of my testers they did it in many colors and they used different colors for these um, squares how do you call this Ah, sorry, I'm lacking the right word for it, but well, basically these squares and um, and then it looked really cool with uh, different colors or it could be really nice to have like a gradient as well. Um, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, I'm also sometimes thinking that I'm giving you a blank canvas and then you can you can play with yarn and colors as, as you like, so... If you feel inspired to do everything different every round in different color, well, be my guest. Um, I would just admire your courage. Um, I'm more of a two color girl. And um, yeah, what else? So it's a long sleeve. It's qu quite long. I also have to warn you. Uh, so for me, I have to fold my ribbing upwards to to get the right length but i'm short i'm 160 and um 
if you're taller the, the sleeves will be perfect for you um, but that's something that um, I figured out later <laughs> wait uh, wait after after I blocked it so that's fine I also like when the when the sleeves are, are rolled up and then maybe I usually do like this and and that's that's how I usually work so nothing is uh, in my way I wanted to do just a simple just a simple round your pullover uh, because last year was <laughs> I was too busy with Bifurka and uh, more challenging things and then I felt like I, I really want to do something something just for the fun of it and um, if it comes in such with such a beautiful pattern and uh, uh, with such a story um, why not so that's a nice little bonus um, yeah so this is how it looks close up uh, if you need to there are some things that I have to mention from the test the neck is quite wide that's a warning um, I will add a note or some adjustments on how to make it a bit more uh, closer fitting and then you can choose to do that um, another thing is that uh, the ribbing on the hem could be just a tiny bit too short that depends which yarn you use but in my case it doesn't uh, roll up or fold but in some cases uh, with some yarns it did it was just a tiny bit too short so if that's the case for your yarn just knit a little bit longer ribbing at the hem and you will be fine so that's the only warning here that I have to give you and then with the length of the sleeve you will you will see when you reach the below elbow you will see how many more rounds you need and how you have to adjust the mm, decreases um, yeah the hem uh, the ribbing on the hem is also quite short so if you feel like you might need more you can adjust for that as well Pre pretty simple pretty quick uh, beautiful pullover it is a bit oversized I also have to warn you that it's a bit oversized um, so if you're in between sizes go for a smaller one but always always check the finished bust measurements so you have to go to the schematic see which number is there for the bust measure your bust add as much positive is as you like for comfortable fit or how you usually wear your sweaters and then choose the size which which is closer to your uh, preferred measurement so that's how you choose a side uh, yeah what else I have another design using this um, similar to this motif well yeah a bit adju adjusted but similar to this the pavuk motif um, and that is a, a vest and um, we are currently testing it and it is something that I want to leave for the next podcast to give it a bit more separate intention because if I pull them together then it's, yeah it doesn't deserve that it deserves a separate episode because um, the vest I designed was you know like you have a favorite sweater or a favorite dress and you would like just like that but in a different color and in a diff with a different pattern or just just a little bit things but but the same so I, I designed this um, a forest keys vest a few years ago and I've been wearing it like almost every week at least uh, once so it's been my go-to vest whenever I feel like a bit chilly um, I just put it on top of anything it, it is a very boxy um, oversized vest that I can put basically on top of anything like even on top of another sweater so it's been a very important garment for me and I thought that I need a new one and uh, with just a little bit more advanced um, elements so I designed a v-neck uh, vest with a nice ribbing along the edging and a beautiful pattern um, along the hem and we are testing the pattern so next time I'm gonna show you the sample and I'm gonna talk about the little things and the pattern and yeah 
but that's for the next time. And the last thing that I will probably show you is um, is a little project that I was working on during uh, my Christmas uh, holidays, and that was um, a pullover for my husband. I rarely need anything for him, and when I do, it's something very simple, very variable, very usable, just sweater, and and you go. Um, so. I made I made the very first sweater for him back in 2018, I think, and it lasted all this year, so it's like six years now. And um, it started um, it started losing losing its I don't know everything. So the cuffs um, they burned out uh, and started this disentangling this. Disappearing basically, <laughs> falling apart, and then the, um, the elbows uh, were thinning out. And um, well, I knew that it's been so old, and uh, um, I wanted we also washed it a few times in the washing machine and it shrunk a little bit. So there were things that um, they were telling me that it's time to make a new one. And shame on you, your husband wears such a sweater. Um, so I thought that I might um, mend it a little bit, and I tried. Um, it's a sh it's a shameful example. I'm not gonna show you, but yeah, this is how I mended it. Um, it was the emergency mending uh, on the go with the yarn that I had. Um, but otherwise, I knew that I had to make a new one. So this was just a very simple raglan pullover um, that I made for him and. Um, I think at I also back then I made it too shallow of the neck so that he couldn't see where the back and front was and uh, I had to put a little knot here so he could see wh which one is the back and um, my husband I have to say is not an easy man to fit a knitted sweater to for and because he has he's very skinny but he has a bit of a hump I would say no, it's not a hump in a Quasimodo sort of uh, way. It's just a bit of um, so his back is rounded and then he needs a lot of shaving on the back and a good shaving on the neck so that it doesn't goes like this and and then it doesn't jump up on the back. Um, so it's been always a challenge and last year was last year. I think last year I made him um, Vernalis from Albiona uh, pullover. I just used her pattern. I had to adjust a few things um, on the neck for him, of course. Um, I'll show you now. I just have to grab it. I can't grab it. I can't grab it. He's wearing it today and he's at the office. Sorry, not gonna happen. But maybe I have a picture somewhere. So in any case, I made that one and that one has um, a saddle shoulder. Is it saddle shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> Well, so the one which is uh, with the uh, flat pieces here and then it's shaped this way. Um, and uh, there, there were good and bad things about it. Uh, the main problem was the neck because of the construction. And um, I had to figure out how to make it to prevent it from rolling because it was doing this all the time on him. And that's probably because the back was pulling it. and. Um, uh, yeah, doesn't matter. So he's wearing it. He's happy. That's fine. I figure out the, the trick to, to adjust it a little bit. I had to rip off the the neck and redo the the whole this part. But with the new one, I, I knew that I had to do it a raglan because raglan is easier to fit. What I'm using here is a... Um, um, Iron weight, iron weight, uh, uh, Donegal yarn. It is a Donegal tweed, but it's not a soft one. It's not the lungs wool. It's just uh, the sheep wool, I think. Uh, it's more rustic, and um, it's the same yarn as the dark one that I had, and I knew that it it lasts long. So I I, I ordered some of this yarn, and this is gray with uh, with uh, with little speckles, and. Um, and I used it for, for this new one. 
and I also made it a bit more oversized because of our washing habits <laughs> so yeah now it has the room to shrink if it needs to I needed it top down and I also I added a lot of short rows so there's a lot of short rows here for the neck um, you see how longer the neck is and uh, there are also extra short rows on the back and uh, on the body just like two rows every few centimeters to extend it a bit longer to accommodate the, the shape of my lovely husband um, but yeah that was a, a big this is my Christmas project and it's done and I'm super super happy that that it's done I used the tubular uh, bind off on all of the edges and uh, I think it looks really good and um, this is how I shape the neck so it goes with a bit of shaping here and then the raglan I am not gonna write any any pattern for it I might add it to my projects on Ravelry and just write down what I did in case I have to do it again in a few years and that's most likely the case um, so that, that could be a good idea to to keep the notes and uh, just do the same or maybe I learned something new by that and then I have more options to adjust but at least I have the starting point so yeah I think um, two and a half skeins of this yarn uh, it comes it's also very um, a very good yarn in terms of uh, price uh, it comes in huge hangs I don't know how I used all the hangs uh, 200 gram hangs and um, I used two and a half I think two and a half of them so it's uh, it's probably like 500 grams but it doesn't feel like it mm. yeah yeah something like that but it is a big and chunky and uh, and very cozy sweater so this was my Christmas knit I didn't take any um, design project with me because I knew that I I wouldn't be able to work on them so this was just mindless well anyway <laughs> for most of it uh, once we figure out the neck and... but yeah um, done I was thinking about mending the old one and uh, it has also been for a while into the in the pile that we are bringing as a donation but now I took it out and I think I'm gonna just rip it off um, wind it into just balls and uh, maybe send it to my mother to to make socks for the army um, sometimes she does that and uh, I think this is a, still a good yarn that could use some that could yeah they could work for a while you know just um, knit it tightly as in, into a sock and uh, it could still serve um, yeah so there are two sides to it either I give it away to the nation and then maybe someone can mend it and, and, and wear it or or we turn it into many many socks for for people who need them I think it's been long enough and I hope you enjoy this um, I will be back very shortly with the new vest design and uh, new new many many other new things I feel like I'm overflowing with ideas but I also have to uh, pace it a bit to not burn out and uh, also to give you the time to knit some of the things actually so yeah i have to watch it <laughs> thank you very much for being here with me thank you for joining uh i hope to see you in the next one bye